Okay, so here we're going to have a look at two ways in which we can get images from Photoshop with transparency, okay? So we have a, a short video that we're going to use here in Final Cut Pro 10. We're going to jump into Photoshop and work on a graphic that we're then going to bring in with its transparency. And we're going to have a talk about a couple of things that come through into Final Cut Pro 10 when you're working with Photoshop document and a couple of things that don't. So uh, we save this off. We have a circular shape, a hue saturation adjustment layer in Photoshop, and then another vector image on the top, okay? So we save that off and we'll jump straight to the desktop and Final Cut Pro, and then we'll pull this in. So we're gonna drag it straight onto our timeline here, okay? So now what you can see when we bring this up in Final Cut Pro is a couple of things. One, we get this kind of little jaggedy edge around the edge of the lines here. Now that's just a feature of being zoomed out here. If you want to see what image quality your graphics are at when you bring them into Final Cut Pro, then make sure you have a peek at them at 100%. So change the zoom here to 100%. Use the navigator here to navigate around your image and just check that the edges look nice and crisp. And things look pretty nice here. So have a nice crisp edge to this London style bus. Okay, we'll jump back to fit. Okay, so now basically what happens when you bring a Photoshop document into Final Cut Pro is it keeps the layers. So if we double click here, we can see that we've still got these two layers which we can turn on and off. Okay, and the nice thing about this is that we can fade them in, we can animate them, we can add transitions to them and effects. So we've got complete control over this in terms of what we want to do with our Photoshop document once we've actually brought it into Final Cut Pro. We can even select both of these, copy them, and then bring them onto our main timeline as individual layers. So if I go to Edit, Paste as Connected Clips, then actually I've now pasted those two layers onto that document, okay? So I have to reposition them, but essentially we've got those design elements from the layers. Let's take a couple of steps back here. So back in our document here, and one thing that you might notice is that in my Photoshop document, my background line here is green, okay? And that's done with this hue saturation adjustment layer. So that's one element of the Photoshop document that doesn't come through to Final Cut Pro 10 is the adjustment layers. So you need to do your own color correction on a layer. So if you come up to the inspector, you can do your own color correction on the individual layers of your Photoshop document. So for instance, if we jump into our color adjustment here, we can tweak the color of our layers okay and we can make a changes to that background block that we have there okay so any changes that you do want to make you can make them in final cut pro 10 but there are some elements of those color changes that are lost okay so we can increase the exposure we can pump the contrast okay of this color in the background okay so we can affect those different layers individually so we're keeping the transparency and we have some nice effects going on here Let's grab these layers again. I'm going to copy them into the timeline because this is really one of the nicest features about being able to bring the layers in from Photoshop, and that is that you can then animate them. So we'll paste those on as a connected clip again, and I'm just going to zoom out a little. Okay. I'm going to drop the, the height of my clips just so I can see everything, see all the layers here as I'm working on them. Okay. With the blade tool, I'm just going to drop at the end of these clips. I use the blade tool and select them and delete them. Okay, so now with these uh, two clips here, okay, I'm gonna drop the, the size of these. So I'm gonna come up to the inspector with them both selected and just keeping the playhead in position there, just drop the scale of those. You can see we can scale them. They're kind of flowing behind each other a little bit because of where the anchor points are for those different images. Okay, so now with these two objects, we can animate them directly within Final Cut Pro 10. Okay, so let's uh, work on the circle first of all. Okay, we'll grab the transform tool. We're gonna move ahead a little in time where we want the animation to finish. We'll add a keyframe here, okay, and then come back to the beginning of that clip and then drag it off, okay? So we'll just zoom out there. Okay, so you can see that basically my clip now is off the screen. So let's come to our bus. So we're gonna have the circle animate on, okay? And then we'll have the bus follow. So we'll add another keyframe for the bus, come back in time a little, and then we'll have the bus kind of follow the circle on. So the circle will snap into place and the bus will zoom on. So we can zoom back to fit like this. Okay. Okay, so basically, 
you're able to animate quite nicely those Photoshop layers. Okay, so now one other thing that we can do is we can wrap this up into a compound clip. Okay, so if I right click and go to new compound clip, okay, then that will mean that this clip is editable as one single clip on the timeline. And the nice thing about that is I can do my animation nice and big, and then with the compound clip selected, I can now scale it down all in one go. So click done, press play. Okay, we've got a nice little London bus, and we can see from that that we do actually need to go in and work on a couple of those keyframes. Okay, so if we select the bus and the move tool, we can navigate between the keyframes. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. Okay, and I just need to take the bus a little further off screen because the scaling has kind of thrown that out of whack a little bit. Okay, so I'll come out. I'm just moving these further off screen so they don't appear at the edge of our composition right at the start. So press play. Okay, and a nice quick little animation there. So if we zoom to fit, you can see everything is still nice and sharp. And we've got a nice little animation from our Photoshop document. Okay, the second way to bring transparency into Final Cut Pro 10 is using a PNG file. Okay, so if we jump into Photoshop now, then this method means that you don't have the, the layer options that you do within Final Cut Pro, but you would keep any color adjustments that you've made. Okay, so for instance, if we want this image just as is, we're not going to do any animation, then there's a quick method of getting it in there. So if we go to File and use the Save for Web function, okay, we're going to save it as a PNG24. PNG24 enables us to keep the transparency of that image. Okay. We'll keep the full size of that image, it means we can scale it up and scale it down if we want to, but the image will all stay intact as one kind of uh, flat layer. And then we'll press save once we're ready. We'll drop it into our surf bus folder, surf bus PNG, save that. And now if we come to Final Cut Pro and then bring up the finder, come into our folder, and now we can drop this PNG right onto the timeline. Okay. And now you can see we've got that image with transparency in Final Cut Pro 10. If we grab the transform tool, we can change the scale of it, we can rotate it, and we can position it as we want it to be positioned, and we can animate that as a, a single individual layer. Okay, so that's bringing an image in as a PNG with transparency, and this option is bringing the whole Photoshop document with the layers, but not keeping some of those layer styles and layer adjustments that you have within Photoshop. So there are limitations to the information that comes into Final Cut Pro. I hope you found that useful. If you have any questions about editing in Final Cut Pro 10, then please don't hesitate to send me a tweet or leave a message here. I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.